in the ayah. Then it does not intoxicate. Therefore, hard drinks are not haram, then they don't have an intoxicating effect. You see how they are playing, brothers and sisters, with the ayahs of the Quran? When you don't have the true teachers of the Quran, then people can play with the ayahs of the Quran. They are playing with it. He is saying to Muhammad ibn Abdul Bahab, yes, alcohol is haram, forbidden, because it makes you drunk. But if you add water to it, and it just makes you happy, but not drunk, then it's okay. You see how they are playing with it? Then you don't have the real teachers, brothers and sisters. Then you don't have the real people to teach you the Quran, then false teacher would come and take over. Then Abu Huraira would become the teacher of Islam. The Ka'b al-Ahbar, those Jews, are going to become the Mufassirin of Quran to explain to us. And this is really, really sad, brothers and sisters. Whatever we are going through today is because we didn't listen to people who were chosen by Rasulullah and were chosen by God to guide us to the right path. We put them on the side and we went along with false teachers. And we are paying the consequences today after 1,400 years. I told Safiya about this dispute we had on drinks and instructed her to make him drink a very strong spirit. After what she said, I did as you said and made him drink. He danced and united with me several times that night. For from then on, Safiya and I completely took control of Muhammad and Najd. In our farewell talk, the minister of colonies had said to me, we captured Spain from the disbelievers, he means disbelievers Muslims, by means of alcohol and fornication. Let us take all of our lands back by using these two great forces again. Now I know how to a true statement it was. Why do you think Quran is telling us that shaitan can get to you by three ways? Alcohol, sex, and gambling. Alcohol, fornication, and gambling. These are the three ways that shaitan get, can get into you. My brothers and sisters, my question is, my question is, are they just fighting Islam with these three methods or they are fighting all religions in the world they are fighting all the religions in the world brothers and sisters Las Vegas is not in a Muslim countries Las Vegas is here in the heart of United States a Christian country brothers and sisters in the heart of a Christian countries they are advertising bluntly they are advertising with no remorse fornication, alcohol, and gambling in that city. And they are calling it, with no remorse, the sin city. And Christians, and Christians, are going to that city to celebrate Christmas, brothers and sisters. They go to that city to celebrate the new year. What is the new year? What is Christmas? These are all related to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Now, did Prophet Jesus said that on my birthday, on the, on the occasion of my coming back, go and fornicate, go and gamble, go and drink, go and do shopping? That Prophet of peace and love, who would go and wash Beggar's feet. The prophet of mercy. The prophet of mercy that would go and help the needy. Today they are celebrating his birthday in Las Vegas, brothers and sisters. In the same city. They are gambling, fornicating, and drinking alcohol. So the plan is not just to destroy Islam, brothers and sisters. Their plan is to destroy the religion. Their plan is to destroy the rules and regulations and discipline of God. So then, 
you are left with their laws and regulations. And by following their laws, their rules and regulations, you become their slaves, as we are unfortunately today. One day I brushed the topic of fasting to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. It is stated in the Quran where fasting is more auspicious for you. It is not stated that fasting is wajib, a plain commandment. Then fasting is sunnah, not, not wajib in the Islamic religion. He protested and said, are you trying to lead me out of my faith? I replied, one's faith consists of the purity of one's heart the salvation of one's soul, and not committing a transgressions against others' right. Basically, here, Mr. Hemphur is doing exactly the same thing that the so-called intellectuals are trying to do to us today. They are creating human rights. Here, here, Mr. Hemper is giving a speech to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab about what we hear today about religion. You see a lot of those Christians evangelists talking about God is love. God is love. You see a lot of those Persian language Christian channels. Khuda muhabbat has. God is love. Which is I mean, yes, God is love, but then what? What do you mean by that? What can we learn from this? Nothing. So Mr. Hemphler was giving the same thing that basically they are absolutely not helpful to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, telling him that one faith consists of the purity of one's heart. The salvations of one's soul are not committing a transgression against others right but who are the people who are going to tell us what is right and what is wrong the people who crashed those airplanes in twin towers killing 3,000 innocent people they thought they were right not a single second they thought they were wrong because if they thought they were wrong they would not do it People that are dropping a 2,000 or 4,000 pound, pound bombs on the head of a bunch of innocent women, children, and elderly riding on their bombs, go to hell haji, they think they are right. Not a single second they think they are wrong. Because if they think they are wrong, they would not do it, brothers and sisters. Who are we to say what is right and what is wrong? Who are we? Under the banner of right and wrong, people have killed millions and millions of people. Estelin, Estelin, the barbaric you know, dictator, killed more than 120 million people, brothers and sisters. And he thought he was right. Hitler killed millions of people and he always thought he was right. Who are we to decide what is right and what is wrong? So here Mr. Hemphar is telling to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab that when you have reached the level of knowing what is right and what is wrong, you don't need to be a believer anymore. Did not the Prophet state, faith is love? Did not Allah declare in the Quran Karim, worship, worship Allah until Yaqeen comes to you? Then when one has attained Yaqeen pertaining to Allah and the day of judgment and, beautif and beautified one's heart and purified one's deeds, one will become the most virtuous of mankind. He shook his head in reply to these words of mine. Brothers and sisters, what a sad story. Do you know what Amir al-Mu'mineen, the true teacher of the Quran said about this ayah? That this Mr. Hemper is using to convince Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab that when Yaqeen, it means the